Well, thank you all for joining uh, here, Arkimoto's 2020 quarter one earnings webinar uh, update. This is uh, actually going to be a pretty much a follow on to the uh, quarter, uh, the quarter four and full year uh, earnings webinar that we did a few weeks back. Um, so if you are new to the story, feel free to hit that uh, video up on our uh, arkimoto.com slash IR page. Um, I'm going to start with uh, a couple of quick videos uh, that are uh, really, really picking up where I left off uh, in the earnings call last time, which was uh, the, the experience that one of our very dear customers uh, has had with the Arkimoto, that being my, my mom, our first angel investor, uh, our very first pre-order customer. Um, then we're going to do a, a quick vignette on the very first deliverator that we have in the field. Um, going to talk a bit about the goals that we laid out for quarter two and where we are in the progress on that. Um, touch on our company meeting that's coming up in a week or so, and then uh, open it up for questions. So it's going to be the planned remarks are going to be pretty short. And I want to make sure we get to your questions. If you have questions, please use the Q and A. Uh, feature in the interface. Um, so with that, I am going to switch over to video. One moment. I think everybody at this time needs to find an outlet. So I tell myself to turn the news off and go outside. I go on a walk, I ride my bike, and increasingly, I simply want to get in my Arkimoto and I want to take a little trip. I do errands, I go out into the countryside. For me, this is a huge mood lifter. It is so much fun. You know, I'm 77, I'm not great at learning new mechanical things. So I was a little nervous about figuring it out. And I went around the block one time and it was an amazing experience. Everybody reacted. Everybody wants it when they see it. And they haven't even driven it yet. The real joy is when you get to drive it. And then you just get the feeling of what it's all about. I kind of like driving it without the doors. I feel like I'm part of everything that's around me. I really can see all the flowers, all the trees, and all the people walking by. I see how they respond to the vehicle and to me driving it. And I feel like I'm part of that world out there in a way I never am when I'm inside of a car but I'm surprised at how much I love the open air experience. It's really true. I absolutely see vehicles like this Arkimoto being part of our future. This uses up no gasoline at all. There's no negative footprint on our beautiful planet. The world would look like a very different place if everybody were driving an Arkimoto. From a psychological point of view, I really need to have my FUV. And not just now, I think it's always going to be like that. I think it's always going to be there to make me happy if I'm having a down moment. And even if I'm not, it'll make me a little happier. I love this vehicle, I truly do. Hello, my name is Chris McAllister and I'm the shelter manager for Carry It Forward as well as the co-director for Springfield. Carry It Forward is a direct service provider who helps those who are unhoused stay alive and get back into services as best we can. So we got some beverages and some chips and some things to supplement dinner. We also got some tents and sleeping bags for when people exit out. This is a temporary shelter meant for COVID and so we want to make sure that uh, while people are allowed to be here that we're protecting them, but then when they go out into the world that they are able to survive and the Deliverator has helped us do that. The Deliverator is awesome because it's able to park into small spaces, be able to take a lot of uh, equipment to a, a very uh, limited access area. If we were to bring our big cargo van, we can't pack into a lot of places that we can zip in with this vehicle. It also is a lot cheaper to drive because it doesn't use gas. And so um, we've been able to get a lot more drops uh, per uh, load than we would with the, the van. We're helping 12 people with the Deliverator, whereas we'd be helping one with the van. So a, a, a couple, just a couple of points on that. Uh, you know, one, I strongly considering considered handing over my uh, company spokesperson role to my mom. I think she'd do a fantastic job. Uh, but in reality, she uh, what she touched on is something that we have heard uh, from over and over from our early adopter customers. Um, just the feeling of of joy of being connected to the world in the vehicle, the level of response that the vehicle receives on the road. 
Um, and just what that does for the perception of uh, sort of the, the post COVID era and the, the, the mission of, of having skies that are clean and a, a world of sustainable transportation. And I think the, the FUV even more speaks to that, uh, that post COVID era than perhaps the era before. Um, and the, uh, the, the deliberator, uh, this, the, the carry it forward is our very first deliberator pilot. Um, that's our, that's our very first deliberator that we have out in the field. Uh, we have planned for this quarter, another five deliberators that will be going into commercial service fleets. Um, and we're gonna have a lot more to talk about, uh, about those particular projects in the coming weeks. Um, so uh, I'm gonna jump into just a quick discussion of our goals uh, for this quarter and where we stand. Um, when, we, when we talked uh, uh, eight weeks ago, uh, we were in the in the throes of uh, adjusting to um, the uh, the pandemic that has has gripped the world, um, and we have in that time uh, adapted our processes for uh, the the majority of our staff to work from home. Um, that's actually been uh, in, in a lot of ways a, a productivity booster. We found that using online video conferencing tools. Um, we're able to, in many ways, work more effectively together in meetings. Um, we have also adapted the production line. Uh, so one of the questions that has come in is when uh, are we planning to restart production? The, the answer is that we actually already have. So we are building now uh, FUVs again at a very low production rate, um, primarily to fulfill uh, our, our obligations to our early evergreen customers, get uh, vehicles out into the field for key early adopter fleets for our fleet vehicles um, and continue building uh, for, for those of you who have been waiting for a very long time to get your Arkhamotos. Um, we have launched deliverators to key fleets. So as I mentioned, we were planning on building six in total this quarter. Uh, all, all six have been built, four now have been deployed. Uh, two more are gonna go into service in the next couple of weeks. Um, and those are all, uh, you know, for, for us, what we see those is hitting really the, the wide range of uses uh, for last mile delivery from uh, up and coming restaurant uh, uh, chain to uh, one of the largest grocery store chains in the country um, to next generation gig economy uh, driving for delivery purposes. And so we're, we're going to have a lot more to talk about. Uh, in the coming weeks about the deliverator and how those pilots are going. Uh, we also, in our last earnings call, talked about our applications for uh, CARES Act financing. We received our PPP loan. Um, we, the, the emergency disaster loan is still in process. Um, and really the bulk of our effort uh, from, from the finance and planning side has been going straight after uh, federal support through the Advanced Technology Vehicle Manufacturing Loan Program. As those of you who've been following us for a while know, the ATVM is where we have been targeting scale financing really for, uh, you know, since, since before we went public. Um, that was in our original IPO documentation. And, and what we have had been waiting for uh, was actually having real production experience under our belt. So we had a, a grasp on what the real scaling process would look like. So uh, with six months of real production under our belt, uh, a, a much clearer picture of what it's going to take in terms of uh, capital expenditures, additional space uh, to scale up manufacturing to the next major step. Um, we are uh, have been, have been uh, pounding away furiously to get that ATVM application done. Our draft is complete. We're in the review process now and planning to submit to the Department of Energy um, that, that draft in the coming weeks. Um, we have also secured, as for, for those who are watching our, our press releases as of this morning, we have secured additional financing. Um, when we talked about uh, financing of the venture uh, just a few months ago, um, we were in a very different position in the market. Uh, and so we took the opportunity uh, presented by the, the uh, extreme growth and in interest in Arkimoto uh, to secure additional bridge financing that we believe uh, will take us, uh, you know, 
assuming that factors go in the in the way that we hope that they will go, will take us through uh, that application process with the Department of Energy. Um, and I think equally important on the scale production side is that, and and I go, I I, I went into a, a, a much more detail on this uh, yesterday in an interview with Hyperchange, um, but we have engaged Monroe and Associates, which is a, a, a storied Detroit engineering firm, um, most notable, most notable to me before uh, we started talking to them for. Their, uh, their, their really involved teardowns of Tesla's Model 3 and Model Y, um, but uh, I've come to learn that they've had a major impact on a, a number of very high profile automotive programs uh, through uh, you know, major global auto manufacturers. And we are bringing them on board uh, to vet our scaling plans, uh, to, to look at, uh, at the Arcimoto program through the lens of uh, of, of true deep Detroit expertise. And we think that they're gonna be an invaluable uh, team asset uh, as we go into scaled mass production. Uh, the other piece that we have been uh, uh, afforded through this time is just to catch up and learn from our first 100 vehicles on the road. Uh, and so we are taking the learnings from the early experiences of our customers, from our own experiences with our early pilot vehicles uh, in, in the fleet setting, uh, to make improvements to the vehicle architecture and the production process. Um, and that is going to affect every vehicle that we build going forward. So again, we're, we have now restarted production, albeit at a very low volume production rate. Um, we are, are adapting as best we can to the pandemic. Uh, and I, I really attribute uh, that to the great strength of our leadership team. Um, this has been a, a, a topsy-turvy world uh, for everyone, and uh, yet everyone at Arcimoto, uh, really from uh, from the, the the leadership team on down, has kept a cool head, and we have pressed forward with uh, with full speed. So that is uh, where we stand today. Um, as we look forward down the road, I think we're you know if if you look at these goals for the quarter, we think we have uh, our stated goals well in hand, and that is going to lead into quarter three where we're gonna be pushing uh, much more on, uh, on building out the sales pipeline and then uh, you know, finalizing and, and pushing through the ATVM process to begin uh, the next stage of build out and scale. So uh, with that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do two more things. One, I'm gonna play we, we, uh, to, the, to the point of, of, of key early customer delivery um, and launching of, uh, of our, our deliverator pilots we have just done two sort of back-to-back -back, uh, crazy California delivery adventures. Um, and I've got a, a short teaser clip that I'm going to play you from those. Uh, and again, these will, will have a lot more to show um, on that front uh, when uh, in the coming weeks. But here, let me, uh, let me bring that back up. <laughs> Taking advantage of the, uh, uh, the the fact that we're doing some key deliveries to uh, to refresh uh, our marketing assets, you'll see those uh, fold into videos that we release uh, in the coming months, and also uh, taking advantage of these trips to pull in uh, some of the vehicles that need work and bring them back to the home base. So, um, with that, one final note, um, which is that. Uh, our annual meeting is coming up here Saturday, June 20th, uh, nine in the morning. Um, typically we host those events inside the factory uh, and offer test drives and tours and uh, things of that nature. We are, due to the pandemic, we are not going to be doing that this year. Uh, we are strongly encouraging that folks vote your proxies now 
and attend via the live stream that will be up at our uh, investor relations page at arkhamauto.com slash IR. So no tours or test drives will be available. The in-person portion of the meeting will be outside, rain or shine. Uh, and again, uh, just for, for the safety of all involved, we're really recommending that folks uh, attend virtually and get their proxies in in advance. So with that, I am going to open it up to Q&A. Um, and uh, yeah, fire away. I'm gonna bring up, we had a couple of questions come in uh, online. Uh, so I'll start there. Um, the first was, what is the planned restart date for production of units at the plant? That, uh, again, has already happened. We, we, we restarted uh, late in May uh, and are now working our way through the final evergreens and some additional fleet pilots. Um, the question, second question was, how much will we receive net of costs and fees related to today's announced stock offering? Uh, the, the deal, uh, this was a deal that priced at $3 a share, all common. Uh, uh, no funny handcuffs, and uh, it uh, it was a net of offering costs and fees. We should clear about just about seven and a half million. Um, our expected the, the the next question is what is our expected cash burn rate for the next quarter? Uh, I don't have a specific answer for you yet. The uh, the the bridge cash literally just came in the door is in the process of coming in the door right now, um, but. The I think the the key is that it will be uh, we we really did a major step down in burn rate um, when we shuttered the production line in March. Uh, we have come back up a little bit, uh, and we plan to keep very tight control on costs uh, in the coming months as we work through our next key milestones. Primarily going after uh, the advanced technology vehicle manufacturing loan funds. So uh, we're we're going to. Uh, really make uh, the bridge funding that we've taken on stretch uh, as far as we possibly can to achieve our next critical milestones. And, and prime amongst those uh, is going after significant scale, non-dilutive financing through the ATVM program. Um, next question is, can you touch upon how you charge your vehicle? So the, uh, the FUV has just a standard uh, J plug, J1772 level two charging plug. So you can either charge from a 110 adapter uh, or you can charge from uh, uh, any of the level two charging stations that are, that are floating out there. Um, next, uh, when, when do you expect the company to be able to self-fund via cash flow from ops? Is there a certain daily production volume that takes us to that level. Uh, that's that question is a, an interesting one to answer because it, it is dependent upon a, a, a few different factors. We believe that with uh, you know should we be successful in our push for scale funding through the ATVM program that we will be able to scale up uh, with the proceeds of those funds to profitability inside of uh, or or right around the eighteen month time frame. Um, there is another pathway that we can take that focuses on the rapid responder, which we think is going to be uh, a, a higher margin opportunity uh, in, the, in the near term. That is that the, the rapid responder we believe has uh, a market that is less sensitive to price than either the deliberator or the fund utility vehicle. Uh, and therefore, we'll be able to achieve profitability with that product line uh, at a lower production rate. Uh, so it's in terms of production rate and timing, we think we could get there faster, fewer with the rapid responder, but the mission of the company is sustainable transportation for the world. And that means we're pushing to scale as quickly as we can across our whole product family. Uh, and, and that's really where it's going. So plan A is uh, uh, go after large scale non-dilutive funding through the ATVM, uh, then Secondarily is to, to focus on our highest margin potential products and drive to profitability at a lower unit volume, which we think is gonna be in the low thousands of units per year uh, and more achievable with the facilities that we already have on hand. Uh, next question is, what was the amount of the PPP loan? We cleared just over a million dollars from the PPP. Uh, 
what is the, the next question is what is the max daily output you can achieve with current plant and funding? You know, we, we were, when we uh, shuttered production in March, we were just about to step up to three units a day. The plan then was to step up to four units a day in this quarter, eight units a day in the quarter following, and then all the way up to 16 units per day uh, in quarter four, which is equates to right around uh, 250, day, 250 vehicles a month uh, out of the current facility uh, using our, 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 our present assets. Uh, uh, so, so that's, uh, you know, 250 vehicles a month, about 3000 vehicles a year. Uh, and that's where we think we're, you know, where we focus very much on, on higher cost, uh, higher margin products that we could achieve a, a path to profitability. Um, we're, we're, what we're aiming for with the proceeds of the advanced technology vehicle manufacturing push is to be able to get all the way up to in the 17 to 20,000 units per year range, uh, which, which puts us in a whole different scale in terms of revenue and profitability. Uh, next question is, uh, do we have an ETA of when we'll open up pre-orders beyond the three or four West Coast states, in particular the Midwest? What are the, some, of, some of the criteria that we're considering in that decision? Finally, when and where will Arkhamoto start up roadshows for test drives, again, in particular in the Midwest? Um, and I would say that, you know, the, the pandemic uh, has really thrown a wrench into uh, this year's plan for expanding market area. So I don't have a clear picture for you uh, other than to say uh, it would be likely either, you know, end of the year or going into the uh, next year when we would be really opening up the, the, the Midwest and East Coast territories. Um, and you know, similarly, the, we're, we're keeping a very watchful eye on uh, the, the progress of the pandemic in terms of uh, how we manage travel and road shows. So we are currently doing no test drive road shows um, are, are around even our, our local area around the West Coast. Um, and uh, as, as, that, uh, as, as we see how the summer goes, uh, we'll, we will certainly reevaluate those plans. Um, even the trips that we are doing, you know, for example, to California, we did that entirely self-contained. We brought our own mobile home to take our team down, uh, had, uh, had, had our meals all done. So we really, our, our, our safety of our team is paramount. The last thing we want to do is uh, bring an outbreak into our own uh, home and facility. And so, um, but, but we expect that as, as, the, as the country continues to, uh, to, to battle the pandemic, um, that we will, we will reevaluate re as we go on. Um, next question is, when do we expect to have initial inputs from, from Monroe? Uh, you know, actually, I mean, we, we got inputs on, on day one. Uh, and day two, which is today, uh, but our our initial phase is is about a two week sprint um, to really get a get an understanding of the program, and then that's going to lead to multiple phases down the road. So uh, I think we're already seeing uh, the the value of, of of bringing their team on board uh, in in very short order. Uh, next question is: Do you have an expected timeline for implementation relative to volume production? Uh, that the, the Timeline for stepping up production is still in flux. You know, we were planning on producing on the order of a thousand vehicles this year, uh, right immediately prior to uh, to the pandemic hitting. Uh, all of those plans, you know, just sort of went uh, right back out the window. Um, but as we look to our plans for 2021 and beyond, we think those are actually coming into sharper focus um, for uh, uh, and 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 potentially nearer implementation. Uh, depending on on how quickly we can move and how quickly we can move through the Department of Energy process, uh, we think that now is a time. You know, certainly for us uh, as a company, now is the, absolutely the right time to partner with the ATVM. We also think that now is the right time for the federal government. If we just look at what they have been doing in terms of uh, economic stimulus, uh, now is the right time to to move quickly uh, uh, through their processes. So. Uh, a lot more is going to become clear on on both of those fronts in uh, in the coming couple of months. And I see a, there might have been a couple of questions over here in chat. Uh, yeah, your mother should be your spokesperson. No kidding. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, 
think uh, it's time for me to retire and uh, hire her on. She, she needs a, a, a day job, I'm sure. Um, uh, so uh, question, what exactly is Monroe going to do and will it result in significant CapEx costs? Um, uh, so, so they are evaluating the program through a few different lenses. You know, one is simply just looking at our supply chain um, and, and saying, you know, they, they've had have deep insight into the, the automotive supply chain in the automotive world. And so when it comes to the question of, well, well how much should this thing cost? Um, they already know the answer. And that I think is going to be incredibly helpful as we, um, as we look at our current supplier con conversations in the go to scale step. Uh, and that's not really about CapEx, that's simply about um, just where we should be and, and who we should, should really be talking to for those pieces of the, of the program. Uh, the, where, where we would see uh, CapEx would be things like um, process changes for particular parts. So where if we have a uh, 15 part weldment that can be turned into a single stamping uh, with the investment in a stamping tool and save on a per unit cost, we'll, we'll look at what our expected payback is and make those investments where they make the most sense. Uh, and then finally, uh, what we're also working with them on is just simply design optimization. Uh, and that would be using our current methods of manufacture. And those would carry with them uh, sort of de minimis tooling costs, but would result in potentially a lighter weight vehicle uh, that would be more efficient and lower cost uh, to, to some degree. So all, all of those options are on the table. And I think we're, we're going to just um, see how that process unfolds with them uh, in the coming weeks and months. Uh, question is, how many units of delivery should we be modeling for Q2? Uh, and what are your thoughts on deliveries for Q3? Um, I would say Q2 is going to look probably not that much different from quarter one uh, in terms of unit count. Um, and that quarter three is still a work in progress in terms of planning. Uh, but it is likely that we are going to stay at a relatively low production volume uh, for at least the next couple of quarters. Uh, finally, do we have a, a, an ETA to complete the first 100 Evergreen FUVs? Um, I'm currently pushing the team to have those completed by the end of this quarter uh, or, or shortly thereafter. Uh, and then the question becomes one of delivery um, as you know, the, the uh, the, the pandemic has, has definitely thrown a wrinkle both into the production side and the delivery side. Um, but we're, we are pushing to get those out into the hands uh, of our, our early evergreen customers so that they can have an absolute blast this summer. Uh, any plans on partnering with Tesla or another provider for service parts uh, and charging? Uh, I think uh, you know, Tesla in particular could be a fantastic partner for us on a number of fronts. Uh, we would love to talk with them about everything from, uh, you know, battery cells to providing semi trucks for our for our delivery. Um, whether uh, whether it's the right fit on on service, uh, I'm I'm not so sure. I mean, one of the advantages that we have uh, with the product on service is that we really can do, um, you know, a, a mobile service van that fixes basically every part on the vehicle. Um, because of the way the vehicle is architected and its size, we just don't we don't need typically a full automotive service type shop uh, or repair type shop to to service the vehicle. Um, so, um, but but I, I definitely uh, see the potential for synergy in the electric vehicle space. Um, and Tesla is awesome, and we you know that's that's a, a conversation we're we're totally happy to have. Uh, what kind of support and upgrade options will happen in the first production models if you make significant changes to future models? So uh, great question. I, you know, and, and what we're planning on doing really is keeping the basic architecture the same. We have a very modular uh, product architecture. So you know, the front clip bolts up to the, uh, the backbone chassis, the, the uh, cage drops on top. And so when we make architectural changes in each section, uh, those will we're, we're aiming as much as possible to keep those backwards compatible from a from a, a bolt interface uh, as we possibly can. Um, and in in a lot of cases, 
the upgrades that we're making as we're learning through this process, we're actually applying back to every vehicle that we have in the fleet. So um, it's it's not just the new vehicles that that are going forward that get the benefit, but our existing customers are seeing um, improvements in the software, improvements in uh, uh, drivetrain components, and it's sort of all, all of the improvements across the board that we've done so far. Um, at some point, we may see a major platform rev where not everything carries forward, um, but so far that has not been the case. Uh, next question is, uh, and I think it's sort of related, incremental changes with Monroe suggestions or changes with model year. Uh, I think it's, it's too early to predict. I think there will, but, but I would say probably a mix of both. So, um, you know, so, some changes that will make sense uh, that to, to fold into the current design process, uh, the current production model, uh, and then others that would take more substantial architectural changes would have to wait for a subsequent model year. Um, next question is long term, can you shed any light on global market potential you are considering? Uh, I, you know, what I would say to that is that we are receiving inquiries uh, literally from all over the planet for the Arkimoto. I think there's it, arguably, uh, it, it, it is a potentially an even better fit in markets like Europe and Southeast Asia, where you have smaller roads, denser, more crowded cities. Um, and so we, we have, uh, as we are, you know, really dialing in on what our scale production push looks like, we are moving forward on conversations about how do we take that, that scale manufacturer template and copy paste it uh, around the world and who are the right partners to work with in each of those markets um, to, to really understand the market uh, and how to go into that market in the most successful way possible. So uh, a, a lot of exciting conversations in the works on that front, uh, none of which I'm gonna talk about. Um, next is uh, great news on working with Sandy Monroe. Uh, thank you, he is awesome. Uh, his best press release quote uh, we've ever had. Um, is that arrangement a pure consulting engagement uh, or is he taking some sort of interest in the firm. Uh, the first phase is just a pure consulting arrangement, um, but we, uh, as we look down the road and figure out what that what that full project looks like, uh, we've got a number of options on the table. Um, can you expand on the agreement with Monroe and what types of benefits, design processes that you expect, and what time frame? I think I've already really touched on a bunch of those. Um, uh, but uh, if there's something I missed, Humphrey, I can go into a little bit more detail. Um, product availability to the Canadian market uh, to be determined. Uh, you know, we want to ba basically within the next 18 uh, to 24 months, we want to be ready to go into uh, additional markets, including Canada and Europe uh, and Southeast Asia, and that's going to involve uh, really another another whole regulatory pass. Uh, and, uh, and, and so the exact timing of that is still unclear. Uh, we're, we're still, you know, getting our sea legs here in the domestic market. Uh, but we, we feel the global demand and our, 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 we very much want to satisfy our particular our pre-order customers who are, uh, in our, uh, neighbors to the North and, uh, overseas. So, uh, definitely, uh, significant on the priority list. Uh, Great work, I just bought my first shares today and I'm excited to follow Arkham World. Well, you picked a good day to buy shares. Uh, uh, you lived in Portland? Well, yeah, so we're just right down the road. So once we're uh, back up and doing things like tours, uh, come on down and kick the tires. Um, regarding areas of purchase, delivery process and servicing, any thoughts on outsourcing this? Uh, so uh, yes, uh, we, and, and I think if you look at our, our uh, initial announcement with Road America, uh, where they are handling all of our roadside assistance nationwide. Uh, they're ex uh, exposing their, uh, their whole network of uh, service garages uh, for us to cherry pick from in our key markets. Um, we want to have a baseline of company operated mobile service, um, but ultimately uh, we wanna partner with in-market outfits uh, and, and sort of not reinvent the wheel. 
but have authorized Arkimoto service partners in our key markets. We already have a, a service training program up and running um, and, uh, and have, have run our first class through that program. Uh, and that will, that will fold into uh, eventually, uh, you know, distance learning, uh, Arkimoto training and so on. So um, that is, uh, uh, you know, as much as possible, our philosophy is, is to uh, collaborate where it makes a lot of sense and not reinvent the wheel and save all of our uh, energy and effort for the things that we can uniquely provide to the world. Uh, when do you anticipate being able to provide a readout on the deliverator rapid responder pilots? Uh, so, so we're already getting feedback, uh, and you can see that in the carry it forward uh, video. Um, I, I just uh, part part of the the uh, the trip. This most recent trip to California is that we delivered deliverators to uh, one of our key delivery partners, and on the way we actually made a, a, a substantial package delivery using those very same vehicles. Um, so uh, I can attest uh, fr from personal experience that the the carrying capacity is fantastic and the ride experience is great. Um, uh, although you, I, I admit bias. Uh, but but we are definitely looking forward to the feedback from our early pilot partners, um, and and that will be you know not just to validate the market thesis, but also you know substantially to make improvements um, to that product uh, in, in order to for, for the for the actual production version of the deliverator. So we're expecting you know one significant design rev at least uh, between now and what we would call the production deliverator that we're shooting for for the end of the year. Uh, final question uh, on the list is what will, when, when will announcement of large grocery collab happen? Um, and that is TBD. We don't have a, a, a fixed time frame on when any announcements are happening. Uh, you can imagine that uh, a, a company of that magnitude is, is they're quite protective of their brand image and they want to make sure uh, that we've delivered them a quality product uh, and, and uh, that they are uh, getting good use out of it before we uh, go blast it out to the world. Um, and so uh, we're, uh, you know, stay tuned on that front. Oh, okay, final, final question. Where does the leisure fleet offering uh, rentals rank in regards to your priorities versus rapid responder, deliverator, and consumer? Um, I, I would say that this uh, has been one of the things that has shifted somewhat uh, as a result of the pandemic is that, you know, when in the early part of the year, we were really very focused on getting uh, lots of rental franchises open. Um, and the, 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 the sort of collapse of vacation travel due to the pandemic uh, has, has shifted our priorities from that to looking at delivery fleets, both uh, for, for companies that are owning their own vehicles, as well as for vehicle sharing type applications. Uh, and so, so what might have been a focus in, in the past on a, on a well, and, and by the way, rentals are still very much uh, the plan going forward for the consumer model, but we're seeing uh, a, sort of an adjacent opportunity uh, that's emerging that we're going to be talking about soon that's focused much more on uh, gig, the gig economy and, and delivering uh, for work. So I would say that you know, we have uh, we have our first uh, key rental partners uh, are the the uh, Arkimoto down in uh, Key West, and they have now taken their second delivery of vehicles. So they're they're almost up to their their, their full plan of 20 vehicles at their first outlet. Um, we have our 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 partner down in San Francisco, uh, Go Car Tours, and it's looking like they are uh, they they have I believe resumed operation of their rentals. Uh, and we're going to be talking about what the next steps mean down there. Um, but we have slowed a little bit uh, on, on the franchise push side in order to get rapid responder and deliverator uh, pilots out, uh, as well as, as continuing to make sure that, that, our, uh, that we're making real progress on our consumer backlog. And that looks like all of them. So I uh, really appreciate you all tuning in. Um, uh, stay tuned. We've got a lot of cool stuff coming in the uh, coming weeks and months. 
And as always, uh, you know, we very much appreciate the support of our investors uh, and our stakeholders. Uh, we would not be where we are today without all of you. So uh, thank you all. We hope that you are staying safe and healthy in these uh, interesting and turbulent times. And uh, we'll see you next time. Take care.